To make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Tonight on Primetime, COVID-19 cases tripling in one metro Atlanta district after the second week of in-person classes. And across metro Atlanta, some districts are making adjustments to their back-to-school plan. After cries of voter suppression, the president says he will not reject funding for the Postal Service, but there are plenty of obstacles in the way to make sure that every mail-in ballot counts. And when their fellow state trooper died in a car wreck, these men made the promise that his family would never feel alone, and they are helping his daughter celebrate one of the biggest moments in her young life. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Good evening on this Friday night. Information from a leaked White House Coronavirus Task Force strongly suggesting that Georgia issue a statewide mask mandate. Meanwhile, Governor Kemp expected to sign a new executive order with COVID-19 restrictions and guidance on Saturday. but. As Joe Hankey reports, it isn't expected to include a mask mandate. Today we received details of items expected to be in Governor Brian Kemp's latest executive order dealing with COVID-19 and reporting on the White House's Coronavirus Task Force report highlights continued concerns about COVID-19 in Georgia. According to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, a leaked White House Coronavirus Task Force report claims widespread and expanding community viral spread in Georgia. In response, a spokesman for Governor Brian Kemp emailed 11 Alive. Governor Kemp continues to rely on data, science, and the public health advice of Dr. Toomey and her team in our state's ongoing battle against COVID-19. As the governor has said many times before, this fight is about protecting the lives and livelihoods of all Georgians. The AJC says a source shared the White House Task Force report dated August 9th. Bullet points include the task force strongly recommending a statewide mask mandate, recommending closing businesses such as nightclubs, bars and gyms in high risk counties and further ramping up testing and contact tracing. Extremely um, impressed and privileged to be working with a team that has um, been ramping up uh, test sites um, to make them more accessible. Emory University associate professor and epidemiologist Dr. Sarita Shaw has been involved with testing in Fulton County since the beginning of the pandemic. She said at a peak, the county tested 20,000 people per week. Testing in um, Georgia uh, has been improving, but it's far behind where it needs to be. Um, there are um, targets that are set based on a number of different um, epidemiologic parameters and we are still well below where we need to be. The governor is expected to sign a new executive order on Saturday as a previous order with restrictions and recommendations expires. But the new one is not expected to mandate masks statewide, despite the federal recommendation. State officials telling 11 Alive the order will look to instead stop local governments from forcing private businesses to implement mask mandates and is likely to allow cities and counties to make mandates, but the governor would seek to limit those mandates to government property. And right now, hospitalizations are going down in Georgia, but cases remain very high. Today, the state reported about 3,200 new cases, 
slightly below our 14 day average. But remember, we have been trending high for about a month now. We also saw a drop in deaths with 35 reported today. Deaths have been trending up for a while. And we have also broken some records recently, but it is good to see this one day drop at any rate. And we will be keeping an eye to see if this is just a one day off or an actual downward trend. As for hospitalizations, there are 237 more people in the hospital today. Add that to the number who are already being treated, and we have nearly 2,700 people right now who are so ill they require hospitalization. But overall, we are seeing hospital visits decline, although resources are still strained outside the city at the critical care level. This summer, the state had to submit a plan to the federal government explaining how it would track COVID through testing. Today, Reveal investigator Rebecca Lindstrom received a closer look at that plan of attack. The word is safety, okay? Rapid, but safety. At the end of April, states were charged with testing at least 2% of their population before lifting stay-at-home restrictions. Georgia was nowhere near that mark, but decided to open anyway. But look, I understand the, the health care ramifications. Georgia did meet that 2% testing goal at the end of May. And in this testing plan obtained by the reveal, the state promised the Federal Department of Health and Human Services to reach 4% by the end of July. That's at least 433,000 tests each month. Georgia succeeded. Labs reported processing 740,000 tests. But the surge in demand led to a backlog that rendered many of those test results useless. I just think it needs to be faster. Daniel Wiggins tested negative, but then developed symptoms. When he tried to get tested again, he had to wait three days to get an appointment and then 10 more days for the results. You're either held hostage in your apartment for two weeks or you know, you don't have results and then you rejoin the world, but then could be spreading it to other people. The goal now is to balance testing capacity with the ability to get those tests processed quickly. While CVS still warns tests could take up to a week, Quest and LabCorp say they only need three days. And Ipsum says it's currently processing tests in 16 hours. But in most cases, you don't get to pick your lab, just your testing site. Even this new mega site in Clayton County that promises results in three days hasn't consistently met that goal. This site is all about volume, making sure we can get as many people tested in a surge capacity as we can. Technology, though, has proven another roadblock. The state has a contract with Mako Labs to process 10,000 tests a day, but has yet to send a single sample because we don't have a way to get the results. In Georgia's testing plan, DPH admits technical infrastructure remains antiquated and inadequate and makes clear Georgia is dependent on the federal government for its testing supplies. Any change would cripple the state's response strategy. The state's testing plan is also dependent on demand. The Department of Public Health says requests for tests have started to fall. The state's mega testing site in Clayton is an example, while it can test 5,000 people a day, only about 1,000 have been showing up. And DPH says they have experienced a high number of no-shows. The summer storms are firing up again, and Cheryl Preheim was uh, posting this earlier today, ever vigilant with her iPhone. And we want to check in now with our chief meteorologist, Chris Holcomb. <laughs> that rain coming down so hard, it was missing the, the gutter there coming out of that downspout. And, you know, we still have some of those pockets of heavy rain moving through the area right now. We've got some on the north side, and then the heaviest activity is here on the south side, just south of Atlanta. And that's all moving over to the east. Not too quickly, but just kind of drifting over to the east a little bit. Here in town, we have a few light showers, a little bit of heavy rain there on the south end of the perimeter uh, there between 75 and 675. Uh, if you go down a little bit more to the south, you can see in the southern parts of Clay, County, moving into Henry County, coming out of Fayette, moving into Spalding and also Pike and Lamar County. We have another surge of heavy rain, about 14 lightning strikes in this red box. And then there's even more lightning more to the south. Look at all of this that's coming in two parts of uh, Upson County out of Meriwether County, moving into parts of Pike and also Lamar County. We have 136 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes with very intense storms here, not classified as severe, just expect some heavy rain there and a lot 
lot of lightning. Those are the main threats that'll keep moving to the east into through Pike County, eventually Lamar County, the rest of Spalding County that might make it over to Butts County in just a little while. And then in the city, not much going on here. A couple of showers on the west side beginning to re regenerate a little bit of lightning over in Carroll County right along I-20 and in North Georgia near Jasper. These came out of Canton earlier with thunder and lightning that continues to drift on up to the north and to the east as well. A little bit of that lightning extending there right on the Gilmer and Fannin County line. Stay with us. We'll talk about our rain chances that are going to be with us during the day on Saturday and then finally the second half of the weekend. We'll see a little break in the rain. We'll tell you more about that coming up. All right, Chris, thank you. Monday, nearly two dozen school districts in our viewing area will either be in person learning, digital learning or a combination thereof. And that includes three of the four largest school districts in the state. More than 300,000 students are enrolled in the Cobb County, DeKalb County, and Fulton County school districts. All three are starting the school year with just digital learning. Fulton County now is hoping that it won't have to stick with virtual learning for the entire school year. The school district eventually wants to get back to in-person learning, but it says it all depends on how COVID-19 is spreading in the county. The superintendent says they could bring kids back into the classroom sometime after Labor Day, but only if they fall below 100 cases of COVID-19 per 100,000 people in the county. Teachers, however, will be going back into the classrooms on Monday. Meanwhile, schools that have let students come back to the classroom are still dealing with new COVID-19 cases in quarantines. In the second week of school for Cherokee County, the district recorded 79 new COVID-19 infections in student and staff. It's more than double from the previous week. More than 1,000 students are currently under quarantine. For reference, there are about 42,000 students in the district. Two of the district's high schools have moved to virtual learning because of this and will do so until at least August 31st. Changes on the way in Polk County as well. The district is now switching to a four-day week with Mondays off, so teachers can plan online lessons for the students. The district were the mix of online and in-person learning, but 90% of the students took the in-person option. They have the next week off. And in DeKalb County, school sports have been delayed until the end of September. That includes marching bands. The district says it made the decision after considering the rise in COVID-19 cases in the county. The district says students can continue with conditioning, which began in June. If you have any questions about a school district's plans for fall or their policies to keep students safe, check out this article on 11alive.com. It breaks everything down for you. And as always, the plans are scrolling at the bottom of the screen. His workday is typically from 11 a.m. to midnight. Michael Wall starts off his day by driving the streets of Atlanta and finishes it standing in front of a canvas. The Marty employee says that most of his friends don't know about a second job, but they will soon. Thanks to a 100 foot billboard in downtown Atlanta. Here's 11 Alive's Brittany Kleinpeter. On the weekdays, I work at 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. 10 p.m. and 12 a.m. I'm usually painting, trying to figure out the questions that I have via Canvas. An Atlanta bus driver by day, artist by night. This is the life of Michael Wall. Sometimes I'm able to do it on my breaks. Like yesterday, I was able to start on a commission that I have. The MARTA employee is now giving patrons rides while showing off his artwork around the city. I told me in prior, you'll see this billboard sticking out there. The longtime artist recently won a contest through a company called Art Pop to have a piece of his work put on a vinyl billboard in Fulton County and several digital billboards throughout the city. And just like Michael himself, there's another story behind the artwork. This is actually a, a picture of my wife. I did it for our anniversary, which was on June 11th. We were married two years. Wall began working on the piece when the couple first got married. He surprised his wife for their anniversary by unveiling the portrait on the 100-foot vinyl sign. I think she was flabbergasted, but I, I, I can't totally speak for her, but I know she was excited, so I'm able to, like, not only show this gift to her, but also show it throughout the greater Atlanta area. The aspiring artist has a message for those pursuing their passion. If you feel something in your heart or in your soul or in your spirit, or however you want to quantify that thing, categorize that, go for it. You're going to make yourself feel a lot better at the end knowing that you did what you wanted to do and not what somebody else made you do. Michael has been working for MARTA for the past three years. He hopes to be an artist full time, but until then, you can find him on Bus Route 15 on the weekdays and Bus Route 2 on the weekends. I love that story. That, he is very good. 
When teenagers saw a racist stereotype on a bag of rice, Mahatma, which we have seen for generations, they decided they didn't want to see that anymore, and they took on a company successfully. Don't forget, we are streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. Subscribe, join the conversation in the community section. Be heard. We hear you now. We've got more 11 Alive news in prime time right after the break. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. an interesting story. Two Atlanta teens launched a, a social media campaign to try to convince Mahatma to get rid of a loco that they didn't like. They didn't like the, the stereotype associated with it. And in the end, Mahatma agreed. Here's 11 Alive's Latasha Givens who talked to these teens and their parents. We have seen brands like Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben's. They were um, taking away they, their logo and this was our little piece of that our justice. Brother and sister duo Rohan and Ronnie Shravistava. It just rubs people the wrong way. Talk to us about how they say they were instrumental and in getting the logo on the Mahatma brand rice discontinued. It's a, a white skinned man who's wearing tr like traditional Indian clothing, like a turban and corta pants. And then along with this, he has like some kind of wand and it just makes it seem like a joke especially since all of their products are grown and packaged in the United States. So there's no reason for them to have an Indian man making it just complete cultural appropriation. The teens started this online petition on change.org and posted about it on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We also contacted um, the parent company of Mahatma Rice, Riviana Foods. And they emailed, urging the company to remove the image. They say the company, Ravinia Foods, responded, stating the logo was no longer in use and perhaps some third-party sellers had not updated their digital images. The teens then pointed out the company still had images on its own official website on June 18th. Two days later, they were gone. But they still found the logo on products at Publix and Kroger stores on June 23rd in Atlanta. So the teens asked for a clear date for when the company would stop using the logo. They say the company agreed to do so by October. So what was this experience like for you all just watching them? I was a little scared. I didn't want them to be hurt, but I was really impressed by their bravery. And it was amazing to see how their actions then are really, you know, created change. The Charvistava team say they plan to take down their petition once those changes are made, something they say the company requested from them. Cheryl? Latasha, we have seen some companies make changes like that, but it comes with backlash really from both sides. Were the teens prepared for that? Well, Cheryl, that was something the parents were concerned about, but from the beginning, the teens wanted to make it clear this is a brand their family uses, and in no way did they want to shame or embarrass the company. They simply wanted them to understand their perspective. 
I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, and you know, we're still tracking some rain moving through the area. We have a cluster of heavier rain on the north side, light stuff here in Atlanta, and then getting really heavy still on the south side with a lot of thunder and lightning, and even more of that rain kind of coming in through uh, parts of West Georgia, too. Let me take you into the city right now, and you can see some of the light showers that came through here a little bit earlier, a little more moderate rain right there on the southeast side of the perimeter as you're about to get to I-20. But then look down here to the south. You can see right at the Clayton and Henry County line uh, just to along 75 here right about to get into McDonough. Some heavy rain with thunder and lightning and then even more down to the south into parts of Spalding County near Griffin into Pike and Lamar counties and Upson County. We have another cluster of really heavy rain. This has 40 mile an hour winds with it. Heavy rain and frequent lightning. We have 175 lightning strikes just in the past 15 minutes out of this and that's going to keep moving over to the east. That'll be impacting Barnesville in a little bit could make it into Butts County if that holds together. And here's that heaviest lightning right around Hannah's Mill, Thomaston, over toward the Rock, right along Highway 19. More of that lightning around the Molina area and up toward Meansville is where we have some of that heavy rain too. And you can see that eastward movement with this, kind of east-northeast right now. So be prepared for that in the uh, eastern parts of Spalding County. Henry County, keep watching some of those showers as they move through as well. Lighter rain here. Here's more of that just more spotty rain over on the west side with a couple of pockets of heavier rain right there north of I-20 in uh, Harrelson County, also up towards Cedartown, south of Rome in southern Floyd County, some heavier showers. And then we've been watching these coming out of Pickens County near Jasper, about to move up into Gilmer, and a few of these right here in Dawson County, pushing into Lumpkin. Those have some heavy rain and some lightning in association with them too. So just know, even though it's the evening hours and we usually see these showers die out, some of these are holding together pretty well. Here's a live look. This is our tower cam at uh, Truist Park as we are looking over over toward the west where you can see some sun behind a few of those clouds earlier and temperatures today were not as hot. Today we did get up to 87, but at least it wasn't in the 90s. Then we had some showers downtown, cooled us off into the 70s. Uh, Carrollton, you cooled into the 70s as well, but you're still in the 80s in Athens where it has been rain free. Now tomorrow we'll stay below 90 again, 87 for your high. Only a five on the wasometer, mostly cloudy skies, 60% chance for showers. There's that rain right over us now. That's going to keep pushing out of the area tonight. And things, even though we'll have a few showers, I don't think it'll be too strong later tonight. But even in the morning, we have the potential for scattered showers at lunchtime and then in the uh, afternoon hours and evening hours some scattered showers but then late Saturday drier air starts to move in and we'll notice that on Sunday with uh, taking the rain chances out for Sunday with a high of 90 only a 20% chance Monday then back to a 30 to 40% chance Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and Friday with high temperatures in the mid and some upper 80s. An unexpected consequence of the pandemic is that it has put the Postal Service on the front line of the 2020 election. The agency quickly running out of money and warning states that deadlines might be too tight to process the influx of mail-in ballots by Election Day. The newly appointed Postmaster General, who is among the top Republican donors, has been making cuts since taking over the position. Today, President Trump walked back his comments that he will reject billions in funding for the Postal Service over the next relief bill to limit widespread mail-in voting. The president claiming vote by mail leads to fraud, but he hasn't offered any evidence to that. His comments had many, including Dr. Bernice A. King, raising the alarm about voter suppression. We need to do what's in the safe interest of all Americans um, and not suppress the vote. I mean, this is clearly voter suppression. Um, and, and, and if I had anything to say, instead of voter suppression in this hour, we need ego suppression. Mm. The president now says he is willing to sign off on money for the Postal Service as long as the Democrats give him a trimmed down relief bill. And in a rare show of bipartisanship, both Democrats and Republicans are promising to protect the Postal Service. The president and his wife have both requested absentee ballots in Florida. When asked about it, his deputy press secretary stated the president supports absentee voting, but not universal mail-in with the Senate in recess. Any new coronavirus money will not be approved at least for another month. We want to hear what your experience has been with the USPS. Are things going smoothly? Or if you had some problems with your mail, you can text us directly at the number on your screen. That's 404-885-7600. And if you say that you're getting too many bills, that does not count. Surveys show that people are feeling the mental and emotional impacts of working from home every day. Up next, some expert advice on how to avoid burnout.
hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority. Workers are feeling the effects of the pandemic. People working from home are. Some are dealing with everything from anxiety to depression. Here's NBC's Dan Shineman reporting from home how remote workers can overcome the work from home burnout. Months of working from home is starting to wear on some employees. It takes a lot more effort than the natural going around, talking to someone over coffee or having a meeting in a conference room. Amir Newman is a New York City-based practice lead for a data analytics company and feels the line between home and work has become blurred. You know, the, the work day is no longer a nine to five. While a large number of workers across the country are grateful for the flexibility of working at home, many feel beaten down. The majority of professionals are actually now working more hours than before. Lauren Appen, co-founder of the business networking app Fishbowl, says thousands of their users are burned out. 69% of professionals say that they feel burned out and actually 37% say that burnout is causing them to look for a new job. The MarTech group surveyed 1,000 people about the lasting effects of working from home. Mental health topped the list of concerns. We came up with these four buckets of people that uh, range from people who are thriving on one end in their response to people who feel um, trapped and are, and are having some serious mental health issues. And that trap group is struggling the most. They're, they're feeling, um, I'm isolated, I'm lonely. Everybody in all professions and in all industry uh, has to uh, understand that everybody's going through the same thing. Hey, she is likely on her way to Congress, but could Marjorie Greene's controversial comments and views be more than trouble? Some interesting thoughts, observations, and musings from NBC's Chuck Todd are straight ahead. In times of great uncertainty, 
Some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. A big week of politics in both Georgia and around America. The biggest news, Joe Biden's selection of California Senator Kamala Harris as the running mate. Joining me right now is Chuck Todd, the moderator of Meet the Press. Chuck, we, we hear so many times that uh, vice presidential picks don't carry a lot of influence in the voting booth. Any chance this is different because Joe Biden would be 78 when he is inaugurated if he wins the election? You know, I, I still look at this. I, I think there could have been a lot more problems in a running mate selection. And I think he avoided problems where this could have been a problem for him. I, you know, he needed to make sure his running mate answered the ready on day one question. And she's answered that by running for president. That's done that. And I think that, you know, had he named a running mate where there had been questions about, boy, you know, she's not, this person's not done an executive office before, this person's not run or whatever, then you would have had these questions about, is she ready on day one. So, look, I think that to me was the biggest hurdle he had to clear because of his own age issues. I do think that there were voters making sure that he had that. Now the question is, does she value add, right? There's no doubt, I think, on fundraising, she's a value add. You already saw the boost. I think on improving the enthusiasm among younger voters of color, that I, I think is a key metric. I think early indications are you are seeing some of that. It's mostly showing up in, in, in some fundraising where you see there is some extra interest now among younger voters where there wasn't that enthusiasm for Biden. Um, but ultimately, you know, I'm curious, we'll know whether it does work or not based on how much does African-American turnout increase from 16 to 20. I mean, if you look at what African-American turnout was in key battleground states in 2008 and 2012, versus 2004 and 2016, right? 2008 and 2012 had Barack Obama on the ticket. 2016 and 2004, the two Democratic um, nominees were all white tickets. Um, and African-American turnout plummeted. Yeah. So that's how we'll know whether this works or not. So I think there's a chance she's a huge asset, but at a minimum, I think she certainly doesn't hurt the ticket. She has taken some hits from both sides. There are some on the left who say she's not progressive enough, and of course those on the right who contend that she is way left. So it is, it is interesting to see this paradox of, of, of the criticism that she has received publicly over the last 48 hours or so. 
You know, Jeff, it's interesting. It's basically the same criticism Joe Biden's been receiving, frankly, his whole political career. You know, they're actually very similar politicians. They both want to be viewed as in the mainstream of the Democratic Party, whatever that mainstream is of the moment. Joe Biden's career, one of the reasons why he's had a durable political career where he has been relevant in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the aughts, the teens, is because he has moved or shifted with the mainstream of the Democratic Party in the 70s was against busing. Yeah. The mainstream of the Democratic Party in the 90s was tough on crime. The mainstream of the Democratic Party today is in a different position, right? Kamala Harris, actually her career, if you track it in California, very similar. This is why on paper it looks like such a powerful sort of coalition-like ticket, that it's the broadest coalition you could create with two people inside the Democratic Party in this moment. Here in Georgia, a controversial candidate wins the Republican primary and is now clear sailing to become the next congresswoman here, the 14th Congressional District. Marjorie Taylor Greene has expressed support for, you know, a lot of conspiracy theories. I, I served as the Atlanta Press Club moderator on one of the debates, and she absolutely roughed up uh, anybody who is running against her. She is a firebrand, whether you like her politics or not. Uh, and, and she is uh, what we have come to expect uh, here in 2020. It's just a, it's a different breed of political life form that takes no prisoners. Well, I think you're right. I think there's sort of two ways to look at her. One is, is obviously her style. And stylistically, she's one of these, you know, comes out of the Trump school of politics, which is, you know, always be attacking. And if you're taking hits, ignore them and go and keep going, right? Keep attacking, keep attacking. So in, in some ways, she's a devotee of that. But I will say this, uh, Jeff, this, this QAnon business is, is some, it's weird, it's crazy, it's a little crack potty, but it, it, may be, it may be becoming dangerous. I mean, you know, it was this QAnon nonsense that inspired some guy um, showing up at a pizza joint up here in, in Washington right. ready to open fire, right? So this is a, this is a, I think this is a political virus that the Republican Party is ignoring um, at their own peril. I, I saw one, one comment uh, in print uh, calling it the John Birch Society on steroids. The John Birch Society had some, I can't believe I'm going to sit here, it, 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 this is like so far off the deep end, this, yeah. it, it, this gets into some really nutty stuff. It's sort of more, if the LaRouche's and John Birch Society had a baby, you'd have this. How's that? <laughs> Rosemary's baby. Where's Roman Polanski today? I, I, I like any reference to Lyndon LaRouche yeah. on the broadcast. That, you, you, you win the contest today on that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Chuck Todd, thanks. We there appreciate you go. it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> See you on Meet the Press Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on 11 a lot. Tracking those thunderstorms that are still pretty intense on the south side right now. They're not classified as severe, but they mainly have some really heavy rain, a lot of lightning and winds of about 40 miles an hour. That's what below what we would classify as severe storms. We had some light rain that came through Atlanta a few minutes ago. That's now over into Cab County, the northern parts of Henry County, moving into Rockdale. This is where we have some of that heavier rain and the thunder and lightning that's along 75 and just to the east of that. And then as you go down more to the south, you see a few more of these showers that are heavier moving into to Spalding County right around Griffin. The, Griffin, this is just to the west of 75. And then that goes into Pike County, Lamar County, and into Upson County. This is where we've had some really heavy rain and very intense lightning and frequent lightning down on the south side. Out of all of this that you, you see in uh, Henry County and this that you see down just around Rover toward Thomaston to the uh, west of Forsyth, we have 109 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. Most of it is with that part of the storm in Pike and also Lamar County. County. We have a few other showers here on the west side. Some of those, like this one right there, just north of I-20 over into Harrelson County. That's producing a little bit of lightning. Also, a little more lightning coming out of Jasper into the southern parts of Gilmer, also into Dawson, right there on the Lumpkin County line west of Dahlonega. Some heavy rain with some thunder and lightning there, too. So not everybody is get, getting hit by these showers and storms, but there's still a few of them out there, and we'll have a few more of those as we continue through the evening hours. And folks, the rain chance tomorrow still on the high end, and then we're going to get a break on the second half of the weekend. We'll talk more about that, and we'll show you what's happening in the tropics. In times of crisis, faith-based organizations play an important role. They aid the poor. They give hope to the hopeless. And during a pandemic, their work continues. Tonight, a pastor, a rabbi, and an emir offer insight into how their lives have changed. People have 
are feeling isolated, people are dealing with depression, people are worried, people are afraid. And where do they often take that? To their faith leaders. I'm Dr. Tony Alvarado. Rabbi Peter Berg. My name is Fahid Ali Mawakel. You know, as Muslims, we, uh, our religion calls us to get real close, even in prayer, even in congregation. At the conclusion of a Shabbat service, for example, people gather and they hug each other and they eat and they drink. We lay hands on people when they're sick. We pray for people by laying our hands on them. When we dedicate babies, we hold the babies. Human touch is so important to every faith tradition and to human beings, and we, we've just lost that. I've learned how to, to do Zoom conversations with people in the hospital, um, you know, in a, in a COVID ward in the hospital. We used to feed the homeless. We used to go out and Sundays and feed the homeless downtown. We don't do that anymore. To not be able to gather at a funeral, not be able to, I mean, we gather before, during, and after the funeral. The emotional healing that takes place, the spiritual healing that takes place from the community I'm afraid it's lack. I think the, the faith leaders have this, you know, dual role right now. We're trying to take care of our own families and we're trying to take care of our flock, our, our congregations. The weight of it is heavy. The weight of it, the mental tone, the spiritual tone, the physical tone of it, it it's, it's heavy. Anyone who signs up to be a clergy of any faith or denomination has to love what they do, and I do. We believe that nothing happens unless God allows it. We're all experiencing it in the business world, in our homes, with our families, and in the faith community. We are all in this together. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. 
Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. The Trump administration taking on affirmative action in a new case against Yale. It is accusing the Ivy League school of violating civil rights laws by discriminating against some applicants. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez has more than the second time the administration is confronted in Ivy League school about race. This morning, Yale University is defending itself in a battle that could have major consequences for the future of affirmative action. The Justice Department is accusing the prestigious Ivy League school of violating federal civil rights law by discriminating against Asian Americans and white applicants. The Supreme Court has ruled several times that race can be used as one of many factors in college admissions, but the DOJ claims Yale is using it as a predominant factor. There is no such thing as a nice form of race discrimination, the Assistant Attorney General for Civil Rights said in a statement, adding unlawfully dividing Americans into racial and ethnic blocks fosters stereotypes, bitterness, and division. Yale fired back, saying it looks at the whole person when considering admission. The department's allegation is baseless, the university's president wrote. At this unique moment in our history, when so much attention properly is being paid to issues of race, Yale will not waver in its commitment to educating a student body whose diversity is a mark of its excellence. Rita Wang is a recent graduate. To me, like, I don't think that th these cases, like, being brought by the DOJ is to benefit Asian Americans. Instead, I think it's using Asian Americans as a way to dismantle like one of the few forms of economic mobility we have in America. And so that's why affirmative action is so important to me. In 2014, a lawsuit against Harvard alleged similar discrimination. Harvard won that case in district court, but the Trump administration is now backing an appeal. As for these new findings against Yale, critics say the government's four-page argument is thin. I think it is highly unusual to suggest you got major findings in a case in, a, in discrimination where you're issuing a four-page letter that basically gives you no underlying facts. We have a lot of lightning on the south side right now, really south of I-20, extending down along 75 and then moving on down uh, to around the Thomaston area. And, and that's where we've been dealing with some of this heavy rain and the main threats have been just that heavy rain, thunder and lightning, also some 40 mile an hour winds. In Atlanta, we had a few showers that came through a little bit earlier, but now just to the east of us in the extreme southern parts of DeKalb County, southeast DeKalb County, moving into Rockdale County, that's right along I-20 and just to the south of that. That's we have another cluster of heavy rain that extends down into Henry County that's near the McDonough area. That's going to keep moving over to the east through Rockdale County. That's going to make it into Newton County in a little while. Just expect some heavy rain and thunder and lightning with that. Also, even more to the south around Griffin and down into parts of Pike County and Lamar County, another cluster of really heavy rain with thunder and lightning. That was very intense over Thomaston earlier, and now all of that lightning has extended over there into Pike and Lamar County. That's about to move into Butts County. We'll watch to see if that's going to hold together into Jasper County, but that entire area of rain is moving over to the east. A little more than 100 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. There you see that lighter rain east of Atlanta, but we have a little more out to the west of us. This is kind of weakening a little bit in Douglas, Paulding, and in southwestern parts of Cobb County. Still some heavier rain in Polk County, moving up into the southern parts of Floyd, and then also scattered showers in North Georgia, too. Some of this with heavy rain right there on the Gordon County line, moving into Pickens, and then a few showers in Gilmer. And then these right here coming out of Dawson, moving into Lumpkin, have some heavy rain and thunder and lightning with those, too. And that, that's all moving to the north and east as well. Take a look at what we're watching out there. This is a lot Look, this is in Athens. I know it's getting darker. We're looking over uh, North Campus right now, and the lights are on at Sanford Stadium. Maybe that's a good sign. Getting things ready for football season. We'll wait and see uh, for that. Take a look at this picture. This is from one of our 11 Alive Community Storm Trackers, Bobby Hockett from the Lawrenceville area. Uh, got a nice uh, rainbow there, and that was over uh, Briscoe Field uh, up in Gwinnett County. So a beautiful look at that. Now, here's what we're watching with the weekend. We're, we're going to see more scattered showers that will be with us here on Saturday. Thunderstorms, a 60% chance for that during the day. Showers and, and some of those storms around highs holding below 90 at 87. Then on Sunday, 
Sunday. Drier air moves our way. We'll see decreasing clouds and 90 degrees for a high temperature, but we've taken the rain chances out of the forecast for Sunday. A couple things we're watching. This is Josephine having a hard time keeping its act together and now a new system here off the mid Atlantic coastline east of uh, Atlantic City. This is our latest tropical storm. This is tropical storm Kyle maximum sustained winds at 40 miles an hour. This is going to move away from land, so it's not going to have any impact on the United States and most likely won't become a hurricane. Josephine isn't going to become a hurricane either. It's going to lose its strength and kind of fall apart and then become an area of low pressure as it curves away from the United States. So for us, the seven day outlook showing that 60% chance for rain on Saturday, no rain chances on Sunday with a high back to 90, then a low chance Monday at 20% with highs near 91, then back to a 30 to 40% chance for showers Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. That's going to bring those temperatures back to the mid and some upper 80s. On the first day of school, Georgia State Troopers kept a promise to a friend they lost and his family. Suzanne Lawler with our sister station at WMAZ in Macon reports. When a public servant dies, usually their co-workers will gather around the family and say, we'll be there for you, we got your back. Well, that's exactly what happened in Cordial this week when Georgia State Patrol officers showed up to a memorable event and made it even more touching. We just decided to take her to school that day and, and make a show of it. State Patrol Officer Robert Donaldson was part of that big show. And this is what it looked like when four-year-old Savannah Parker headed to pre-K for her first day of school. Not a lot of talk. There was a lot of, lot of ugly faces with red eyes, but it, you know, it, um, Savannah knows. I mean, she knows she's loved by everyone. And Gary Parker is a retired state trooper, and he lost his son two years ago. State Patrol Officer Tyler Parker, who was 23, hydroplaned off a road and slammed into a tree. It was a horrible rainstorm. I've never seen anything like it and uh, lost control and um, on the road that we actually live on. From that day forward, the men and women who wear the uniform pledged to stick by the Parkers, especially Savannah. The only way for Savannah to know her daddy and to know that he was the trooper he was is to have the family of the Georgia State Patrol to be a part of her life. Oh yeah, Tyler was a great guy um, and if the roles were reversed, he would have done it for any of us. I, I don't want him to, to go through it alone um, and the State Patrol is always going to be there for him. It will take a few years for Savannah to realize the significance of this day and that's okay. But these folks don't plan to ever leave her side that she can call any of us. She has a whole list of numbers she can call at any time and we'll all be there day or night. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. The newly appointed candidate to replace Representative John Lewis on the November ballot, sharing some insight on what she wants to accomplish in Washington this morning on MSNBC. State Senator Nakima Williams talked about moving the needle forward when it comes to voting rights. The very first thing we need to do is get the John Lewis Voted, Voting Rights Act passed, and it needs to be more comprehensive than we had um, originally. We can't just go back to where we were. We have to move the needle a little more forward. We've seen what voter suppression has done across the country, especially here in Georgia, and that's going to be one of the key things that I'm looking to get done. She says a big part of her job since the announcement is making sure that people know how this vote is going to work because she believes it to be pretty confusing. There is a special election and a general election for the seat. Seven candidates will compete in the election, but Williams is not on that ballot. Whomever wins would fill the seat for only a few weeks before Williams faces off against Angela Stanton King in the general election. The winner will fill the seat for two years. If you're still not sure how this is going to work, we have the whole process broken down for you on 11alive.com to search for this headline. Ahead on prime time, the right to choose, at least in some cases. Tonight, new details on the executive order the governor is expected to sign and where he is drawing the line when it comes to mask mandates. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body. The stepmother of the fired Atlanta police officer Garrett Rolfe facing a defamation lawsuit. She's accused of teaming up with a Georgia congressional candidate known for touting racism and conspiracy theories to trash the name of her former employer. Here is Natisha Lance. On the same day, former Atlanta police officer Garrett Rolfe turned himself in on 11 charges related to the death of Rayshard Brooks. His stepmother, Melissa Rolfe, was fired from her job as an HR director. I want to be very clear when I want to say that it had nothing to do with what her son did or did not do. It had to do with her actions. A lawsuit recently filed by Equity Prime Mortgage claims since Rolf's termination, she and the campaign for congressional candidate Marjorie Green launched a smear campaign against the company. Including tweets from Marjorie Green, like this one from June 30th. Led to death threats to myself, my family, bomb threats to the building, employees getting just harassed online. It even played out during an interview with Tucker Carlson on Fox News. You been in trouble with them? Was there any indication that they were going to fire you before you received the message saying you were terminated? No, I had received full support. The lawsuit claims otherwise, saying Ralph was terminated because she repeatedly violated company policy and created an uncomfortable and hostile working environment during her four months of employment. The suit states Rolf was reprimanded three times and Equity Prime Mortgage was investigating additional claims. Rolf denies the claims laid out in the lawsuit. Her attorney tells 11 Alive, I believe this is a conspiracy to defame Melissa Rolf and it may have involved a conspiracy to defame Marjorie Green. The attorney also says the accusations are provably false. Are we hitting the mark or missing it? Our reveal investigators taking a closer look at whether Georgia is meeting the benchmarks it's set to curb COVID. And to people who live there, it serves as an ugly reminder of the city's oppressive past. Others argue it's a part of history. The new direction the city is taking over this controversial monument. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Information from a leaked White House Coronavirus Task Force report strongly suggests Georgia issue a statewide mask mandate. Meanwhile, Governor Brian Kemp is expected to sign a new executive order with COVID-19 restrictions and guidance on Saturday. But as Joe Henke reports, it is not expected to include a mask mandate. Today we received details of items expected to be in Governor Brian Kemp's latest executive order dealing with COVID-19 and reporting on the White House's Coronavirus Task Force report highlights continued concerns about COVID-19 in Georgia. According to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, a leaked White House Coronavirus Task Force report claims widespread and expanding community viral spread in Georgia. In response, a spokesman for Governor Brian Kemp emailed 11 Alive. Governor Kemp continues to rely on data, science, and the public health advice of Dr. Toomey and her team in our state's ongoing battle against COVID-19. As the governor has said many times before, this fight is about protecting the lives and livelihoods of all Georgians. The AJC says a source shared the White House Task Force report dated August 9th. Bullet points include the task force strongly recommending a statewide mask mandate, recommending closing businesses such as nightclubs, bars and gyms in high risk counties and further ramping up testing and contact tracing. Extremely um, impressed and privileged to be working with a team that has um, been ramping up uh, test sites um, to make them more accessible. Emory University associate professor and epidemiologist Dr. Sarita Shaw has been involved with testing in Fulton County since the beginning of the pandemic. She said at a peak, the county tested 20,000 people per week. Testing in um, Georgia uh, has been improving, but it's far behind where it needs to be. Um, there are um, targets that are set based on a number of different um, epidemiologic parameters, and we are still well below where we need to be. The governor is expected to sign a new executive order on Saturday as a previous order with restrictions and recommendations expires. But the new one is not expected to mandate masks statewide, despite the federal recommendation. State officials telling 11 Alive the order will look to instead stop local governments from forcing private businesses to implement mask mandates and is likely to allow cities and counties to make mandates, but the governor would seek to limit those mandates to government property.
The state has released new insight into the spread of COVID-19. In the past week, the Department of Public Health reports 110 outbreaks in Georgia. 23 of those were in long-term care facilities. Schools like Etowah High in Cherokee County accounted for 14 outbreaks. So did offices in Georgia. There were 13 outbreaks at manufacturing facilities and 13 more in prisons and jails. Churches and restaurants were also identified as a source of COVID spread. The number of new cases, while still very high, has started to steady a bit. We had about 3,200 new positive test results reported today. The number of people in the hospital with coronavirus also continues to decrease. But DPH does not want to make those trends and take those trends for granted. It averaged 31,000 tests every day this week and hopes that number doesn't drop. This summer, the state had to submit a plan to the federal government explaining how it would track COVID through testing today. Reveal investigator Rebecca Lindstrom got a closer look at that plan of attack. The word is safety, okay? Rapid but safety. At the end of April, states were charged with testing at least 2% of their population before lifting stay at home restrictions. Georgia was nowhere near that mark, but decided to open anyway. But look, I understand the, the health care ramifications. Georgia did meet that 2% testing goal at the end of May. And in this testing plan obtained by the reveal, the state promised the Federal Department of Health and Human Services to reach 4% by the end of July. That's at least 433,000 tests each month. Georgia succeeded. Labs reported processing 740,000 tests. But the surge in demand led to a backlog that rendered many of those test results useless. I just think it needs to be faster. Daniel Wiggins tested negative, but then developed symptoms. When he tried to get tested again, he had to wait three days to get an appointment and then 10 more days for the results. You're either held hostage in your apartment for two weeks or you know, you don't have results and then you rejoin the world, but then could be spreading it to other people. The goal now is to balance testing capacity with the ability to get those tests processed quickly. While CBS still warns tests could take up to a week, Quest and LabCorp say they only need three days. And Ipsum says it's currently processing tests in 16 hours. But in most cases, you don't get to pick your lab, just your testing site. Even this new mega site in Clayton County that promises results in three days hasn't consistently met that goal. This site is all about volume, making sure we can get as many people tested in a surge capacity as we can. Technology, though, has proven another roadblock. The state has a contract with Mako Labs to process 10,000 tests a day, but has yet to send a single sample because we don't have a way to get the results. In Georgia's testing plan, DPH admits technical infrastructure remains antiquated and inadequate and makes clear Georgia is dependent on the federal government for its testing supplies. Any change would cripple the state's response strategy. The state's testing plan is also dependent on demand. The Department of Public Health says requests for tests have started to fall. The state's mega testing site in Clayton is an example. While it can test 5,000 people a day, only about a thousand have been showing up and DPH says they've experienced a high number of no shows. The number of students infected with coronavirus in Cherokee County has now tripled since school started last week. But for perspective's sake, it's still a small number compared to the overall student population. There have been 66 new cases among just students in the second week of classes. The cases have forced nearly 1100 students and 17 staff members to quarantine. There are about 42,000 students in the district. Woodstock High and Etowah High have the most cases. Both schools are now closed and are not expected to reopen for in-person learning until at least August 31st. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Here we are on a Friday night, the evening hours, usually when storms start to diminish. These are still holding together pretty well, and we have a lot of heavy rain and thunder and lightning. I'm talking now with just around 400 people on Facebook Live. A lot of folks are telling you what they're experiencing here, especially east and south of Atlanta, where we've had some really heavy rain and a lot of thunder and lightning. Here's what we're watching. I'll put this into motion. You can see how this is moving over to the east. Here in town, we've had a few light showers. Heaviest 
rain right now is uh, to the east of DeKalb County here into Rockdale County. Look at that cluster of very heavy rain. This is right along I-20, moving north of I-20 as well. With that heavy rain in Rockdale, this is about to move into Newton County, so be prepared for that over near, Co near uh, Covington, also over into the southern parts of Walton County, and then look down to the south into southern Henry County, Spalding County, Lamar County, also Monroe County and Bus County, another cluster of very heavy rain, and we have some a, a lot of lightning with that too. So in this red box that you see here, about 116 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes as that moves over to the east. And then there's more uh, back to the west, just some lighter stuff, a little bit of lightning back in Polk County near Cedartown, and then uh, around Ella J, Gilmer County, and then look at this right here in Lumpkin County, another cluster of really heavy rain with some thunder and lightning that is moving up toward the north and to the east. So here's the bigger picture that we're talking about right now scattered showers, that heavy line to the south that's moving to the east, and there are some pockets without any rain around as well. Here is a look at what we're uh, a live look out there right now. This is up in Rome. Nothing particularly heavy in Rome right now, but you can see the roads are wet from the showers that came through just a little bit earlier. Stay with us. We're going to break down the weekend for you one day has a higher rain chance than the other. In fact, one of them we've taken the rain chances out. We'll break that down in the seven day outlook in just a few minutes. Georgia House Speaker David Ralston has stripped the chairman of the House Retirement Committee of his duties over offensive comments he made about the late Congressman John Lewis. During a radio interview, Tommy Benton spoke out against replacing a statue of the Vice President of the Confederacy, Alexander Stevens, with one of Lewis in the U.S. Capitol. In the interview, Benton said Lewis's only claim to fame was getting hit in the head on the Edmund Pettus Bridge back in 1965 on Bloody Sunday. Lewis was among the activists brutally attacked by state troopers on that bridge, and he nearly lost his life. Today, Ralston released a statement condemning their remarks, calling them offensive and disgusting. We've reached out to Ben's office for a statement, but have not heard back yet. The battle over emergency funding for the U.S. Postal Service could lead to delivery delays on everything from prescriptions to paychecks. And the Postal Service is warning some states the lags could impact voters getting their ballots to election offices on time. According to the Washington Post, Georgia is one of those states. The new head of the Postal Service, who is also a Republican donor, recently made a series of changes meant to address longtime financial issues. But critics say those cuts are leading to delays in service. Democrats are pushing for emergency funding to ensure those delays don't impact elections. But President Trump says he will only support the funding if Democrats give him a trimmed down version of the coronavirus relief bill. There are a lot of rumors and stories out there about the Postal Service right now concerning its future as well as its role in the election. Tonight on Uplay at 11, our Verify team looks into three claims about the USPS, what's true and what's not. That is tonight at 11 on 11 Alive. When these two teenagers saw a racist stereotype on a bag of rice, they decided to take the company on to get change. And don't forget, we are streaming for you right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. You can join the conversation down in the community section. Subscribe. Also, we have got more news coming up in prime time after the break. In fact, frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
in times of great... Two Atlanta teens launch a social media campaign to convince a company to get rid of a logo they believe depicts negative stereotypes. And in the end, the company agreed. 11 Alive's Latasha Givens talked to the teens and their parents. We had seen like, brands like Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben's. They were um, taking away they, their logo, and this was our little piece of that, our justice. Brother and sister duo Rohan and Ronnie Shravistova. It just rubs people the wrong way. Talk to us about how they say they were instrumental in getting the logo on the Mahatma brand rice discontinued. It's a, a white-skinned man who's wearing tr like traditional Indian clothing, like a turban and kurta pants. And then along with this, he has like some kind of wand. And it just makes it seem like a joke, especially since all of their products are grown and packaged in the United States. So there's no reason for them to have an Indian man making it just complete cultural appropriation. The teens started this online petition on change.org and posted about it on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We also contacted um, the parent company of Mahatma Rice, Riviana Foods. And they emailed, urging the company to remove the image. They say the company, Ravinia Foods, responded, stating the logo was no longer in use and perhaps some third-party sellers had not updated their digital images. The teens then pointed out the company still had images on its own official website on June 18th. Two days later, they were gone. But they still found the logo on products at Publix and Kroger stores on June 23rd in Atlanta. So the teens asked for a clear date for when the company would stop using the logo. They say the company agreed to do so by October. So what was this experience like for you all just watching them? I was a little scared. I didn't want them to be hurt, but I was really impressed by their bravery. And it was amazing to see how their actions then are really, you know, created change. The Sharp Vista of a teen say they plan to take down their petition once those changes are made, something they say the company requested from them. Cheryl? Latasha, we have seen some companies make changes like that, but it comes with backlash really from both sides. Were the teens prepared for that? Well, Cheryl, that was something the parents were concerned about. But from the beginning, the teens wanted to make it clear this is a brand their family uses. And in no way did they want to shame or embarrass the company. They simply wanted them to understand their perspective. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. We're still talking about more than 200, 200, 250 people here on Facebook Live right now. A lot of folks are telling uh, us about uh, the heavy rain that they've been dealing with. And some folks saying that they, they feel like they've had four inches of rain already over the past few nights. And there's more heavy rain out there right now, especially here east and south of the city. Here's what we're watching. I'm going to put this into motion. You can see these storms that we've been tracking on the south side. Uh, and they're not really weakening that much as they move over to the east. They're still holding together very well now as they many of them have crossed over 75 and they're now right over I-20 in Rockdale County. Right around Conyers is where we have a cluster of really heavy rain and thunder and lightning. That's about to move. It's crossing over the line into Newton County. Get ready for that in Covington. It's also going to cross over into Walton County. It may hold together to get into Monroe with the heavy rain and thunder and lightning. And many people on Facebook Live right now were saying even though they're not under that storm, in these areas, they can see the lightning from the distance and hear the thunder there. And there's a lot of lightning with this right there on top of I-20. And then down to the south, southern Henry County into Butts County, moving down into Monroe County. This is about to move into Jasper County near Monticello. Another round of heavy rain and thunder and lightning. Again, not classified as severe. That's moving over to the east. Look at the lightning with this. We have 124 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes in all of this uh, red box right here. A break in Atlanta, a couple of spotty showers over to the east, Polk County near Cedar town you have a little cell with some thunder and lightning and then another bit right here in Lumpkin County north of Dahlonega about to move into the southern parts of Union County that has some heavy rain with it also some of this up into Rabin County too again not everybody's getting hit by these showers but those of you who are that rain is pretty heavy here's what we're watching take a, a look out there this is a live camera this is in Rome I know I just showed you this a minute ago but the roads are wet in Rome right now from those showers that are moving through a little bit of a breeze too uh, that's behind some of the showers hours that have already rolled through. 
Now take a look at this. Temperatures have cooled down thanks to the uh, rain that came in a little bit earlier. We're all pretty much in the 70s right now. Athens, one of the cooler spots at 79, actually warmer spots at 79, but at least you're below 80. Atlanta is 76, Carrollton 73, Canton 73. That's thanks to the rain cooled air that moved through a little bit earlier. Now tomorrow, we're going to get up to 87. Today's high was also 87. We didn't hit 90 today. I don't think we'll hit 90 again tomorrow either. We're going to go with a five on the wasometer and we will see those rain chances though that will be at about 60%. Here you see that heaviest rain on the south side. That's going to keep on pushing off to the east and things will let up a little bit tonight, but there will still be some spotty showers even lingering into the morning. This is what I was just explaining to folks on Facebook Live. We can see some showers at any time tomorrow but it's not going to rain all day. It's going to be the off and on variety. But once we get into the afternoon, that's when some of those showers could have some heavier rain with them and maybe some of the thunder and lightning. Now, here's the good news about the weekend. Drier air starts to filter in Saturday night, and then on Sunday, we will have a few clouds around mixing in with the sunshine, but we're taking the rain chances out for Sunday. I think it's going to be a dry day and then getting into Monday, only a 20% chance for showers pushing in later in the day on Monday. So that's that's a good thing for you. Uh, here's Tropical Storm Josephine and Tropical Storm Kyle, which is off the mid Atlantic coastline. Neither of those looks like they're going to cause any impacts here in the United States. But coming up in our next half hour, I'll show you those forecast tracks for both of those systems. Here's the seven day outlook. 60% chance for showers uh, during the day on Saturday at any time. And then Sunday, the rain chance is out of here. Uh, highs near 90. Monday, a low rain chance at only 20%. Then a 30 to 40% chance for showers Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Temperatures next week for most of the week look like they'll hold in the mid and some upper 80s. A good laugh means a lot more in stressful, challenging times. A family in Fayette County wanted to deliver some humor in an unexpected way. It's so unexpected, so ridiculous. You can't help but look and laugh. How's everybody doing? And that's exactly what the Lee family was hoping for. It's so good to put a face with a dinosaur. <laughs> Spotted at one of my neighborhood grocery stores, I posted the video, and Twitter did its magic, connecting me to Christine and Chris and their kids, Kira and Cameron. He's the other dinosaur, trying to find things to do that might be fun or different and to kind of shake things up for our family. The kids weren't so sure. I approached them, I'm like, would you guys be on board? And what'd you say? No. <laughs> Dad documents the adventure. One is just a... Uh... When you have three of them in the shot going, it's just, it's the funniest thing in the world. What's the best part of dressing up and going out and about? I guess it was just knowing that you're going incognito. There, there's no message. There's no meaning. There's, there's nothing, just funny. Great memories. Just for a moment, we were able to take them out of their day-to-day -day existence and turn it into there, that is the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen. These bobblehead dinosaurs roaming through the store and to take them to a place that, that genuine laughter and genuine joy, if only for a few minutes. I think it's just fun. Love that story. All right, so we are a little more than 24 hours away from the Atlanta Sports Awards on our sister station, 11 Alive, tomorrow at 7 p.m. We have our last reveal today, the outstanding Team 1-1 high school athlete. Let's see the winner. Outstanding Team 1-1 high school athlete. Raven Johnson is used to winning. Westlake's rising senior is a three-time state champion going for a four-peat this winter. It's not many girls that can say they have a four-peat in Georgia, so that's one of the things I want to do. This year's Team 1-1 Outstanding Athlete also has goals bigger than a state title. This year we got invited to Nationals, so we didn't get to go because of coronavirus. So my goal was to get invited to Nationals again and win that for my coach. Leave with a good mark for her. Johnson is a South Carolina commit looking to continue to win at the next level. The culture, definitely the culture, the fan base. Um, definitely Don Staley, her being a point guard, me being a point guard, her being a point guard coach, I feel like she can take my game to the next level, um, let it grow, and definitely the girls that's there, we have a shot of winning the national championship, so I look at that. A piece of history haunting one small Georgia city, the structure's role in the enslaved and the mission to remove it. 
Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect. A Georgia city quietly decided this week to remove what historians describe as one of the most historical monuments in the state. The city is Louisville, located outside of Augusta, and it's home to what appears to be a monument unlike any other in Georgia. 11 Alive's Doug Richards paid a visit today and has more. This structure in downtown Louisville has been standing here for more than 220 years. It may be gone by the end of this year. Every time I think about it, I almost bring tears to my eyes. James Ivory says he has lobbied authority in Louisville for decades to remove the open air wood frame building described blandly in a historical marker as the market house. But hundreds of slaves were sold here. Got black folks standing up here in chains mothers with their little babies torn from their arms and sold to the highest bidder. The market house dates to when Louisville was the capital of Georgia decades before Atlanta was founded. Another marker placed here 84 years ago says this early slave market is probably the only such market standing in Georgia. There are few spots like it left in America, says Georgia historian and DeKalb County CEO Mike Thurman. It's extremely uh, historic and rare, uh, literally uh, sacred ground when you consider that thousands of Africans, later to be African Americans, were sold like cattle. This is the white races, this is their heritage. Ivory says he wants it relocated away from Louisville and Jefferson County. You know what it's telling me? that black peoples are no more than three-fifths of a man. But Thurman says the market has a broader historic context. But what it really represents to me in proper context is the courage and the determination of enslaved people to maintain their humanity. The structure's final destination is to be determined, but we're told that there is a strong contingent of folks who do want to keep it somewhere here in Louisville, Georgia. 
Next, she is likely on her way to Congress, but could Marjorie Greene's controversial beliefs and comments be dangerous? Some interesting remarks from NBC's Chuck Todd are straight ahead. During primetime, we're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1101 Live News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage. A big week of politics in both Georgia and around America. The biggest news, Joe Biden's selection of California Senator Kamala Harris as the running mate. Joining me right now is Chuck Todd, the moderator of Meet the Press. Chuck, we, we hear so many times that uh, vice presidential picks don't carry a lot of influence in the voting booth. Any chance this is different because Joe Biden would be 78 when he is inaugurated if he wins the election? You know, I, I still look at this. I, I think there could have been a lot more problems in a running mate's election. And I think he avoided problems where this could have been a problem for him. I, you know, he needed to make sure his running mate answered the ready on day one question. And she's answered that by running for president. That's done that. And I think that, you know, had he named a running mate where there had been questions about, boy, you know, she's not, this person's not done an executive office before, this person's not run or whatever, then you would have had these questions about is she ready on day one. So, look, I think that to me was the biggest hurdle he had to clear because of his own age issues. I do think that there were voters making sure that he had that. Now the question is, does she value add, right? There's no doubt, I think, on fundraising, she's a value add. You already saw the boost. I think on improving the enthusiasm among younger voters of color, that I, I think is a key metric. I think early indications are you are seeing some of that. It's mostly showing up in, in, in some fundraising where you see there is some extra interest now among younger voters where there wasn't that enthusiasm for Biden. Um, but ultimately, you know, I'm curious, we'll know whether it does work or not based on how much does 
African American turnout increased from 16 to 20. I mean, if you look at what African American turnout was in key battleground states in 2008 and 2012 versus 2004 and 2016, right? 2008 and 2012 had Barack Obama on the ticket. 2016 and 2004, the two Democratic um, nominees were all white tickets. Um, and African American turnout plummeted. Yeah. So that's how we'll know whether this works or not. So I think there's a chance she's a huge asset. But at a minimum, I think she certainly doesn't hurt the ticket. She has taken some hits from both sides. There are some on the left who say she's not progressive enough. And, of course, those on the right who contend that she is way left. So it is, it is interesting to see this paradox of, of, of the criticism that she has received publicly over the last 48 hours or so. You know, Jeff, it's interesting. It's basically the same criticism Joe Biden's been receiving, frankly, his whole political career. You know, they're actually very similar politicians. They both want to be viewed as in the mainstream of the Democratic Party, whatever that mainstream is of the moment. Joe Biden's career, one of the reasons why he's had a durable political career where he has been relevant in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the aughts, the teens, is because he has moved or shifted with the mainstream of the Democratic Party in the 70s was against busing. Yeah. The mainstream of the Democratic Party in the 90s was tough on crime. The mainstream of the Democratic Party today is in a different position, right? Kamala Harris, actually, her career, if you track it in California, very similar. This is why, on paper, it looks like such a powerful sort of coalition-like ticket, that it's the broadest coalition you could create with two people inside the Democratic Party in this moment. Here in Georgia, a controversial candidate wins the Republican primary and is now clear sailing to become the next congresswoman here, the 14th Congressional District. Marjorie Taylor Greene has expressed support for you know, a lot of conspiracy theories. I, I served as the Atlanta Press Club moderator on one of the debates, and she absolutely roughed up uh, anybody who was running against her. She is a firebrand, whether you like her politics or not. Uh, and, and she is mm -hmm. uh, what we have come to expect uh, here in 2020. It's just a, it's a different breed of political life form that takes no prisoners. Well, I think you're right. I think there's sort of two ways to look at her. One is, is obviously her style. And stylistically, she's one of these, you know, comes out of the Trump school of politics, which is, you know, always be attacking. And if you're taking hits, ignore them and go and keep going, right? Keep attacking, keep attacking. So in, in some ways, she's a devotee of that. But I will say this, uh, Jeff, this, this QAnon business is, is some, it's weird, it's crazy, it's a little crack potty, but it, it may be it may be becoming dangerous. I mean, you know, it was this QAnon nonsense that inspired some guy um, showing up at a pizza joint up here in, in Washington right. ready to open fire, right? So this is, a, this is a, I think this is a political virus that the Republican Party is ignoring um, at their own peril. I, I saw one, one comment uh, in print uh, calling it the John Birch Society on steroids. The John Birch Society had some, I can't believe I'm going to sit here, it, 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 this is like so far off the deep end, this, yeah. it, it, this gets into some really nutty stuff. It's sort of more, if the LaRouches and John Birch Society had a baby, you'd have this. How's that? <laughs> Rosemary's baby, where's Roman Polanski today? I, I, I like any reference to Lyndon LaRouche yeah. on the broadcast. That, you, you, you win the contest today on that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Chuck Todd, thanks. We there appreciate you go. it. All <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> See you on Meet the Press Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on 11 yeah. Alive. The newly appointed candidate to replace Representative John Lewis on the November ballot is sharing some insight on what she wants to accomplish in Washington. This morning on MSNBC, State Senator Nakima Williams talked about moving the needle forward when it comes to voting rights. The very first thing we need to do is get the John Lewis Voting, Voting Rights Act passed. And it needs to be more comprehensive than we had um, originally. We can't just go back to where we were. We have to move the needle a little more forward. We've seen what voter suppression has done across the country, especially here in Georgia. And that's going to be one of the key things that I'm looking to get done. She says a big part of her job since the announcement is really making sure people know how this vote is going to work because it's pretty confusing. There is a special election and a general election for this seat. Seven candidates will compete in the special election, but Williams is not on that ballot. 
Whoever wins could fill the seat for only a few weeks before Williams faces off against Angela Stanton King in the general election. The winner will fill the seat for a full two years. If you are still not sure how this is going to work, we do have a whole process broken down for you on 11alive.com. Just search for this headline. We're still watching those showers and storms that are on the south of the area and east of us right now. Some of this extending now north of I-20. This is right there at Rockdale County and also Newton County where we have those heaviest storms. Plenty of lightning with this and this is moving to the east. It's about to move into Walton County with this cluster right here. It's in Newton right there about to close in on Covington, extending down toward Butts County, about to move into Morgan County and also Jasper County and a couple of showers extending even up into Gwinnett County. Those are not that strong, but the heaviest part is right here along I-20 right there in Rockdale County. Just got a new lightning count on this. It's down a little bit, but it's still a lot of lightning. We had more than 100 lightning strikes a little while ago. Now it's 75. That's showing us that it's weakening a little bit, but still you're probably sitting there saying this isn't weak because you've got a lot of lightning right there, and that's going to keep moving up into uh, crossing over the line into Walton County. And then in the southern parts of Henry County here, moving into the southern parts of Newton County and the Butts County, also into Jasper County, another round of heavier showers, some lightning there. Now with that and this, we have close to 100 lightning strikes, and that's going to keep moving to the east. In Atlanta, some breaks, a couple of showers over here into Paulding County, a little bit of heavy rain at West Paulding, and then also on the north side, some showers in Gordon County with lightning, also in Lumpkin County. County. We have some lightning up in those areas too. Take a live look out there right now and you can see here as we expand out a little bit just the spotty nature of these showers. The heaviest stuff on the east side. Everybody else just seeing a couple of those little hit and miss showers. Stay with us. Rain chances are going to be higher on Sunday, but they do come actually on Saturday. They do come down though on Sunday. We'll tell you about that in a few minutes. In times of crisis, faith based organizations often play an important role. They aid the poor, and give hope to the hopeless. And even during a pandemic, their work continues, but it's really different now. Tonight, a rabbi, a pastor, and a mirror offer insight into their lives and how things have changed for them. People are feeling isolated. People are dealing with depression. People are worried. People are afraid. And where do they often take that? To their faith leaders. I'm Dr. Tony Alvarado. Rabbi Peter Berg. My name is Fahid Ali Mawakel. You know, as Muslims, we, uh, our religion calls us to get real close, even in prayer, even in congregation. At the conclusion of a Shabbat service, for example, people gather and they hug each other and they eat and they drink. We lay hands on people when they're sick. We pray for people by laying our hands on them. When we dedicate babies, we hold the babies. Human touch is so important to every faith tradition and to human beings, and we, we've just lost that. I've learned how to, to do Zoom conversations with people in the hospital, um, you know, in a, in a COVID ward in the hospital. We used to feed the homeless. We used to go out and Sundays and feed the homeless downtown. We don't do that anymore. To not be able to gather at a funeral not be able to, I mean, we gather before, during, and after the funeral. The emotional healing that takes place, the spiritual healing that takes place from the community, I'm afraid is lacking. I think the, the faith leaders have this, you know, dual role right now. We're trying to take care of our own families, and we're trying to take care of our flock, our, our congregations. The weight of it is heavy. The weight of it, the mental toll, the spiritual toll, the physical toll of it, it it's, it's heavy. Anyone who signs up to be a clergy of any faith or denomination has to love what they do, and, and I do. We believe that nothing happens unless God allows it. We're all experiencing it in the business world, in our homes, with our families, and in the faith community. We are all in this together. Brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message... His work day is typically from 11 a.m. to midnight. Michael Wall starts off his day by driving the streets of Atlanta and finishes it standing in front of a canvas. The MARTA employee says that most of his friends don't know about his second job, but they soon will, thanks to a 100-foot billboard in downtown Atlanta. 11 Alive's Brittany Kine Peter has the story. On the weekdays, I work at 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. 10 p.m. and 12 a.m., I'm usually painting, trying to figure out the questions that I have via Canvas. An Atlanta bus driver by day, artist by night. This is the life of Michael Wall. Sometimes I'm able to do it on my breaks. Like yesterday, I was able to start on a commission that I have. The MARTA employee is now giving patrons rides while showing off his artwork around the city. I took me in prior, you'll see this billboard sticking out there. The longtime artist recently won a contest through a company called Art Pop to have a piece of his work put on a vinyl billboard in Fulton County and several digital billboards throughout the city. And just like Michael himself, there is another story behind the artwork. This is actually a, a picture of my wife. I did it for our anniversary, which was on June 11th. We were married two years. Wall began working on the piece when the couple first got married. He surprised his wife for their anniversary by unveiling the portrait on the 100-foot vinyl sign. I think she was flabbergasted, but I, I, I can't totally speak for her, but I know she was excited, so I'm able to like not only show this gift to her, but also show it throughout the greater Atlanta area. The aspiring artist has a message for those pursuing their passion. If you feel something in your heart or in your soul or in your spirit or however you want to quantify that thing, categorize that, go for it. You're going to make yourself feel a lot better at the end knowing that you did what you wanted to do and not what somebody else made you do. Michael has been working for MARTA for the past three years. He hopes to be an artist full time, but until then, you can find him on Bus Route 15 on the weekdays and Bus Route 2 on the weekends. 
The lightning count is starting to come down a little bit on these showers here on the uh, east side along I-20 now crossing over I-20 into parts of Walton County, uh, Rockdale County, Newton County, and then that extends on down a little bit closer to the Macon area. We also have a, a few lightning strikes in some of these showers and storms up in far north Georgia. Let's look at these first. This is the area of rain that we've been tracking on the south side that is moving up toward the north and east, and now you can see that biggest cluster of thunder and lightning with that heavy rain in Rockdale County about to cross over the actually crossing over the line into into a Walton County right now. This is just to the south and west of Monroe about to move in Monroe Covington heavy rain is moving into your area right now. You've got the thunder and lightning with that too. That's in Newton County. This is going to keep moving into Morgan County uh, weakening, maybe making it into Oconee County a little bit, but that weakening trend is going to continue with this. Most of the lightning right now is in this cluster. We have about 49 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. Most of this is right along I-20 and just north of I-20 and then down to the south. We're watching the lightning with this start to let up a little bit more. That's moving into Monticello, also down into areas of Monroe County. Some of this will make it into Putnam County, but it's also weakening a little bit too. Now, when you look at that and this on the south side, we've got about 70 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes here in Atlanta. A few spotty little showers have been moving through on the west side, a little moderate rain in Paulding County about to move into West Cobb. Also some right there in Carroll County to the north in Gordon County, a couple of areas with some lightning. Also, we've been watching this lightning in the northern parts of Lumpkin County, moving into Union County with some pockets of heavy rain. But the trend is going to be that these will continue to weaken as everything moves on off to the east. Take a look at what we're watching out there for today. You know, it got warm today, but we stayed below 90. That's a good thing. And we were one degree below average. Our high was 87. We should be around 88 for this time of year. So we'll take that slightly cooler air. However, we can get it. Our low this morning was 72. We watched our temperatures fall even more when some showers came by the airport. Only a tenth of an inch of rain there, but that really helped those temperatures to move down into the 70s. Now tomorrow, we're going to see uh, more showers and a few thunderstorms occurring at any time during the day, but it's not going to rain all day. The better chances will be in the afternoon, 60% chance for that. And I do think we'll stay below 90 again with a high of 87. Now on Sunday, that's going to be the better day of the two weekend days where we will see no rain chances, a partly cloudy sky, but high temperatures do warm back up to around 90 degrees. Now, let me show you what we're watching with the tropics. We have Josephine here and then a brand new tropical storm. This is Kyle that is off the mid Atlantic coast. And the good news about this, notice the way that it's moving. It's pushing off to the east, so we don't think it's going to have any impact or move in and make a landfall into the uh, United States coastline or anything. It does get up to about 50 mile an hour winds through the weekend, and then it goes back down. It loses its tropical characteristics once we get into the beginning of next week. Josephine really having a hard time holding together as a tropical storm. Maximum sustained winds at 40 miles an hour may get up to 45 tomorrow, and then coming down uh, into a tropical depression as it curves away from the U.S. That won't have a landfall on the southeastern coast line either. But we'll keep watching both of those and any additional disturbances out in the tropics. This is the time of year when things get more active. We've got a 60% chance for showers off and on during the day. Saturday highs near 87. Rain chances are out of here for Sunday with drier air in place and then back just to a 20% chance for a shower Monday and then a 30 to 40% chance for showers Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. But look at these temperatures next week. Looks like they will hold in the mid and some upper 80s. On the first day of school, Georgia State Troopers kept a promise to a friend they lost and his family. Suzanne Lawler with our sister station in Macon shows us how they're coming through. When a public servant dies, usually their co-workers will gather around the family and say, we'll be there for you. We got your back. Well, that's exactly what happened in Cordial this week when Georgia State Patrol officers showed up to a memorable event and made it even more touching. We just decided to take her to school that day and, and make a show of it. State Patrol Officer Robert Donaldson was part of that big show. And this is what it looked like when four-year-old Savannah Parker headed to pre-K for her first day of school. Not a lot of talk. There was a lot of, lot of ugly faces with red eyes. But, it, you know, it... Um, Savannah knows. I mean, she knows she's loved by everyone. Gary Parker is a retired state trooper, and he lost his son two years ago. State Patrol Officer Tyler Parker, who was 23, hydroplaned off a road and slammed into a tree. It was a horrible rainstorm. I've never seen anything like it, and uh, lost control and, um, on the road that we actually live on. 
From that day forward, the men and women who wear the uniform pledged to stick by the Parkers, especially Savannah. The only way for Savannah to know her daddy and to know that he was the trooper he was is to have the family of the Georgia State Patrol to be a part of her life. Oh yeah, Tyler was a great guy, um, and if the roles were reversed, he would have done it for any of us. I, I don't want him to, to go through it alone, um, and the state patrol is always going to be there for him. It will take a few years for Savannah to realize the significance of this day, and that's okay. But these folks don't plan to ever leave her side. That, that she can call any of us. She has a whole list of numbers she can call at any time, and we'll all be there day or night. Frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently. Tonight we want to introduce you to a three-year-old with the talent to create masterpieces and the maturity to understand she could use her skills to help others. This is Julia Navarro. She was diagnosed with a rare liver disease at just three months old. She is now happy and very healthy, who knew exactly what she wanted to do for her birthday. She loves to paint, so instead of gifts, she auctioned off her artwork raise five thousand dollars for research at children's health care of atlanta julia you are truly a masterpiece happy birthday we're still tracking a few of those showers with heavy rain thunder and lightning over on the east side they are showing signs of weakening more showers will redevelop tomorrow 60 percent chance you'll get hit by a shower at any time during the day highs below 90 right at 87. now sunday looks dry a high of 90 and then only a 20% chance for a shower Monday and then a 30 to 40% chance next week with high temperatures back in the mid and upper 80s. All right, that's going to do it for us here in the nine o'clock hour, but stick around prime time rose on at 10 and we'll see you on 11 alive at 11 for up late.
let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Paulding County parents are butting heads about whether students should learn in person or virtually. Tonight, we hear from parents and students. And a community is rallying together to help a fire chief in the hospital fighting coronavirus, how they are showing their support for him. Plus, we are clearing up three viral claims about President Trump's statements on the U.S. Postal Service. We verify what's real and what's not. But first, on this Friday night, a break in a deadly shooting July 4th weekend in Northeast Atlanta's Sweet Auburn neighborhood. Newly released surveillance video now showing everything, including some suspects. The chaos ending with 14 people shot. Two had been killed. John Chirik is on that story for us tonight. It was chaos. A witness describing chaos when gunfire sprayed through the July 4th weekend street party on Auburn Avenue in Northeast Atlanta. Two people killed, a dozen more wounded. Atlanta police just now releasing images from the shooting, showing some possible suspects. The images taken from surveillance video that police recently obtained. Crime Stoppers is now offering a reward of up to $2,000 for anonymous tips that help police find the men. And I cannot express the pain that I'm enduring right now. This mother, Sherlyn Ingram, telling us last month she has a message for whomever killed her 21-year-old son Joshua in that melee. You remove a mother's heart. 
you removed my heart. Since that weekend, businesses in the Sweet Auburn neighborhood fighting to survive the one-two punch of COVID and crime. The popular Sweet Auburn Seafood Restaurant closed. The latest crime figures in this neighborhood not available Friday night. But the owner of Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, Matthew True Nelson, tells me police have been meeting with business owners and police have stepped up patrols. And they have taken steps to make sure that crime is under control. The presence of the police out here has increased and their, their tolerance of stuff that they may have walked away from before, they're addressing it. I've seen a reduction in crime. Now Atlanta police hoping the public will help lead them to the men they believe shot up this neighborhood and took a mother's heart. Police tell us the surveillance video is graphic, violent, like a Wild West scene at the OK Corral. Detectives plan to release portions of it possibly as early as Monday. The rain, she was a fallen today in Carrollton. Viewer Carol Carmichael sent us this video from a driveway. Earlier today, our chief meteorologist Chris Holcomb has been busy tracking thunderstorms tonight. Chris, the weekend, is it going to look like this? Well, we're going to see some breaks for the second half of the weekend, but until then, we're still going to be dealing with some of these scattered showers. And, you know, we've got some of these out there tonight that are still holding together. We're finally seeing some of these weaken a little more as these over to the east of us continue to push to the east. That was very intense earlier here on the south side with a lot of heavy rain and intense lightning here in Atlanta. We're OK. We've got just a few spotty showers here on the west side and also over into parts of Cobb County. This is where we've been dealing with some of that heaviest rain that has been coming in through the south side. It moved up to the north and east, crossed over I-20 there in Rockdale County. Now it's moving up into uh, Monroe and Walton County and in even eastern parts of uh, Gwinnett County, about to move into Barrow. Uh, but we do have some pockets of heavy rain and thunder and lightning, but not as much lightning as we had earlier. You can see some of that lightning right up there in the Gwinnett County side here near Monroe and Walton County south of 78 and it goes down across I-20 on the south side into Covington into the Newburn area. Uh, heavier rain about to move into social circle right now. In this spot, we now have about 26 lightning strikes in the past 15 minutes. As this was on the south side earlier, it had over 100 lightning strikes. Still some heavier rain uh, in Jasper County, Monticello. That's about to move into Eatonton. It'll make it in over toward Lake Oconee in a little bit, but it's falling apart with those 13 lightning strikes there. Over in West Cobb, we've got a little shower there. Also on the north side, tracking some showers. Some of these with thunder and lightning. They are also showing signs of weakening out there. And for the rest of the nighttime hours, just expect a few of those spotty showers around. Better rain chances on Saturday, and then the rain chances diminish on Sunday. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. The city of Roswell is coming together tonight to uplift the fire chief who was battling COVID-19. Roswell Fire Chief Ricky Burnett is on a ventilator in the ICU. He has been since contracting COVID-19. Caitlin Ross reports his family and friends have been encouraged by the outpouring of love and support. Roswell Fire Chief Ricky Burnett takes the time to get to know the people in his community. He's just a great man. He was great working with me to set up the visit. April Olson worked with the chief earlier this year to set up tours of the local fire stations for the in-community organization for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So we just wanted to make sure that the fire and police know who, who our individuals are. The chief coordinated the visits personally and made sure they went off without a hitch. It was wonderful. It was laid back. Um, they allowed our individuals to get into the fire truck. They were just really welcoming and great. Welcoming and great are just some of the words used to describe the chief who took the position in 2014. Thousands of people paid tribute to Chief Burnett online, calling him a tireless worker who is wholly dedicated to his job and his family. He's been in public service for 30 years and was instrumental in getting the Georgia Firefighters Cancer Protection Bill passed in 2018. Even at the top of his department, his co-workers say he makes a difference in the lives of the people he meets every day. He's an essential worker and, and we need our folks, so this COVID is just scary for all of us. His family has not shared an update on his condition today, but posted online they're so grateful for all of the support and love they've received. He's just a good man, so I hope that he comes out of this. Right now, hospitalizations are going down in Georgia. Cases, though, remain high. Today, the state reported about 3,200 new cases. That is slightly below the 14-day average. But remember, it has been trending high for about a month now. Also, a drop in deaths, 35 reported today. Deaths have been trending up for a while, and there have been some records recently broken. There has been a one-day drop. 
we will continue to keep an eye on this to see if there is an, uh, a one actual downtrend that we are seeing so far. As for hospitalizations, there are 237 more people in the hospital today. Add to that number who are already being treated. They have nearly 2,700 people right now who are so sick that they require hospital care. But overall, they are seeing a hospitalizations decline, although resources still are strained outside the city at the critical care level. Governor Brian Kemp is set to sign a new executive order on Saturday with new COVID-19 restrictions. This comes as the White House Coronavirus Task Force is pushing for Georgia to issue a statewide mask mandate. Mm -hmm. The task force is also suggesting the state close nightclubs, bars and gyms in high risk counties, as well as ramping up COVID-19 testing. State officials tell us the governor's order won't likely include a mask mandate, but it could give cities and counties more freedom to implement their own policies. As more students go back to school, districts are learning how to cope with COVID-19. Paulding County knows better than most. After positive cases forced the district into complete virtual learning all within the first week of school. Tonight, parents are still divided on if students should be face-to-face -face or virtual. Natisha Lance reports. I'm here because I have a 76-year-old mother-in-law who lives in the community. Dueling rallies faced off in Paulding County Friday, clashing over the best way for students to learn during a COVID outbreak. Josh Plancher raised his concerns for in-person instruction. He was outnumbered by another group pushing for it. It's our right to deserve a proper education and digital learning just isn't it. North Paulding High School 10th grader Mariah Krakowski says being back in the classroom is better academically, socially and mentally. Plancher is not completely opposed to in-person learning, but feels serious change need to be made. I like to see a pause in general and, and I, I just like to hear a very public conversation about how we can take care of our community better. Some parents created another strategy to keep school doors open. A woman on Facebook shared a public post from what appeared to be a closed Facebook group. We can't independently verify the comments, but the group encourages parents to keep their kids at home if they get sick. In its first week of school, the Paulding County School District reported nearly 60 total COVID-19 cases. About 30 of them were cases in school or confirmed cases of staff and students who spent time on campus. North Paulding High School closed for virtual learning for five days after reporting nine positive cases. Families at the rally understand the risk and say everyone should be able to decide on their own. If you want to stay home, stay home. And if you want to go to school, go to school. Starting on Monday, students at North Paulding High School will move to a hybrid schedule that will include virtual and in-person learning as well. Monday, nearly two dozen school districts in our viewing area will begin either in-person learning, digital learning, or a combination of the two. That includes three of the four largest school districts in the state. More than 300,000 students are enrolled in the Cobb County, DeKalb County, and Fulton County school districts. All three are starting the school year with just digital learning. Fulton County hopes it won't have to stick with that virtual learning for the entire year. School district eventually wants to get back to in-person learning, but says it all depends on how COVID-19 is spread in the county. The superintendent says they could bring kids back into the classroom, into uh, the area at, at some point after Labor Day, but only if they fall below 100 cases of COVID-19 per 100,000 people in the county. Teachers, however, will be going back into the classrooms on Monday. Meanwhile, schools that have let students come back into the classroom are still trying to figure out new COVID-19 cases and quarantines. On the tonight, thousands of Cobb County students are on a waiting list to receive laptops for virtual learning before school starts on Monday. Georgia State Representative Erica Thomas is leading the charge to help those students. She says she made a few calls to get laptop donations and help has been pouring in. Thomas has been delivering those resources to schools. One uh, organization called Hype that helps black young girls to learn how to code. She's like, Erica, I have four laptops at my house right now. I might be able to get some other stuff, but right now I have four laptops. I swung over there to South Atlanta, got those laptops, took them over to Pebble Brook High School um, to, you know, where they're having a drop off for laptops and got those over to her. Then, you know, swing all over, trying to make sure we got those laptops. Then, you know, Microsoft stores gave me a call, said they have laptops. So, you know, just trying to go all over Atlanta, Metro Atlanta, to make sure that these kids have what they need for money. Thomas says they were able to get dozens of laptop donations, but it won't be enough for everyone by Monday. If you would like to help, head to 11alive.com and click on this story. 
In the second week of school for Cherokee County, the district recorded 79 new COVID-19 infections in students and staff. That is more than double from last week. More than 1,000 students are now in quarantine. For reference, there are about 42,000 students in this district. Two of those districts high schools have moved to virtual learning because of this until at least August 31st. Changes are on the way in Polk County as well. The district is switching to a four day week with Mondays off so teachers can learn and plan online lessons. The district went with a mix of online and in person learning, but 90% of the students took the in person option. They have the next week off. In DeKalb County School, sports have been delayed until the end of September, and that will include marching bands. The district says it made the decision after considering the rise in COVID 19 cases in the county. The district says students can continue with conditioning, which began in June. If you have any questions about a school district's plan for the fall or their policies to keep students safe. You can check out this article on 11alive.com. New tonight, Gwinnett County police have arrested a suspect in the shooting death of an elderly man. Police believe Jose Sanchez Vasquez shot and killed 70 year old Richard St. John three months ago. Investigators found an injured St. John on Brittany Way near Necro Parkway in Norcross back on May 24th. No word tonight on a motive behind the shooting. Stone Mountain Park will be closed all day tomorrow. Park officials say they're shutting down things because of security concerns. Multiple groups plan protests, including at least one far right militia organization and an anti fascist group. That park will open as normal on Sunday, but tomorrow is trouble. After the break, we're looking at claims that President Trump is intentionally blocking posts of cash to stop mail-in votes. We verify next. Survey says people are feeling the mental and emotional impacts of working from home every day. In the next half hour, some expert advice on how to keep yourself from burning out. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is. The president has weighed in on the U.S. Postal Service as we see viral claims saying it's being intentionally slowed just months before the election. We've had our verify team looking into a couple of those claims. Here's Jason Puckett. There are a lot of claims about the U.S. Postal Service right now. Some true, some false, and some that can't be verified. Let's start with some claims about President Trump. Dozens of headlines say, quote, Trump admits he's blocking postal cash to stop mail-in votes. Republicans and Democrats in Congress have been at a stalemate over the terms. And on Fox Business on Thursday, President Trump was asked what's keeping them from a deal. Here's what he said. Two of the items are the post office and the three and a half billion dollars for mail-in voting. Now, if we don't make a deal, that means they don't get the money. That means they can't have universal mail-in voting. 
They just can't have it. So Trump does say money for mail-in voting is one of the reasons Republicans aren't agreeing to a deal, but he doesn't explicitly say he's blocking it. Then on Friday, he was asked if he would sign off on a deal that funds the USPS. His response? Sure, if they gave us what we want. Then there's this claim that President Trump called the USPS the most corrupt and anti-American way of voting and said, quote, if I have to shut down the entire mail system in the months leading to the election, I will. Now, this image says it's a quote from the Sean Hannity show in late July, but it's false. President Trump did not appear on Sean Hannity that day, and this quote was not tweeted, shared, or said by the president in any other format. We're finally seeing those showers uh, on the east side and south of us weakening a little bit as they've been holding together pretty well coming in from southwest Georgia or southwest of the metro area uh, south of us and then now over to the east and south again and with some very heavy rain and thunder and lightning. We still have some lightning with this, but just not as much as we had earlier when these were really intense on the south side. Here in Atlanta, just a few spotty showers. We have some showers there in uh, western parts of Cobb County. No lightning with that, but just some moderate rain. Here's what is left of that system. Still with some heavy rain and thunder and lightning. This extends there right on the Gwinnett and Barrow County line. Little thunder and lightning there. And then through Walton County, where this is breaking up a little bit more, still some moderate and even pockets of heavy rain. A few lightning strikes there that stretch down through uh, Covington and Newton County, moving into Morgan County just to the west of Madison. Here's a little bit of that lightning between Campton and Monroe, right there along 78 and north of that. And then south of 78 toward Jersey and Social Circle. We still have some moderate rain here. And then down into Newton County, also into parts of Morgan County as well, where we have some of these scattered showers that'll keep on moving through and into Jasper County too. Uh, some of these showers from Monticello southward and that's moving into Putnam County, but at least they're a lot weaker now than they were earlier. Uh, if you move up into North Georgia, we do have some scattered showers, some of these back into Gordon County and also into Gilmer County. And then we've been watching this lightning that's been hanging out in Lumpkin County, crossing over into White County right now with uh, some pockets of heavy rain. That is also showing some signs of weakening. So for the rest of the nighttime hours, yeah, there may be a few scattered showers out there still even overnight, but we don't expect anything to be particularly strong. Take a look at what we're watching right now with uh, the next 12 hours. We're still going to see a few clouds around tonight, mild air, but even in the morning, some scattered showers are going to start developing here. We're going to go with a 60% chance for showers tomorrow. Highs near 87. We're only going to go with a five on the wasometer. It's going to be okay that we're going to be below 90 like we were today. Tonight, you can see most of those showers diminishing in the morning a few scattered showers that we'll have with us at lunchtime and then also in the afternoon and some of those could be heavy at times. Now I want you to know we could have these scattered showers at any time of the day, but it's not going to rain all day long if that makes sense. And then the drier air starts coming in late Saturday night and into Sunday. Right now it looks like it's going to be a rain free day and uh, high temperatures though get back up to 90 degrees. We're back to a 20% chance for a shower Monday. That's a really low rain chance. I think most of us will be dry Monday and then back to a 30 to 40% chance for rain Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday with highs in the 70s. Take a look at your weather wow moment. Uh, this is from Chandler Stewart in Atlanta, one of our 11 live community storm trackers. This is the lightning from last night. That was pretty intense here in the Atlanta area. There's also video, video Sally Gustafson. Look at all that in Bishop George. I know that was a short video there, but thank you to our 11 Live Community Storm Trackers for helping us tell the weather story. You can be a part of that group on Facebook. Just search 11 Alive Storm Trackers, ask to become a member, and you can also share your weather information with us and the rest of the folks in the group too. With all that's happening in the world, sometimes you just need a good laugh. The strange thing one family did to bring a smile under your mask. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. 
We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick cover your cough or a laugh really goes a long way in these stressful and challenging times. A family in Fayette County wanted to help deliver a little humor in an unexpected way. Cheryl Preheim has a story. It's so unexpected. So ridiculous. You can't help but look and laugh. And that's exactly what the Lee family was hoping for. It's so good to put a face with a dinosaur. <laughs> Spotted at one of my neighborhood grocery stores, I posted the video, and Twitter did its magic, connecting me to Christine and Chris and their kids, Kira and Cameron. He's the other dinosaur trying to find things to do that might be fun or different and to kind of shake things up for our family. The kids weren't so sure. I approached them, I'm like, would you guys be on board? And what'd you say? No. <laughs> Dad documents the adventure. One is just, uh, when you have three of them in the shot going, it's just, it's the funniest thing in the world. What's the best part of dressing up and going out and about? I guess it was just knowing that you're going incognito. There, there's no message. There's no meaning. There's, there's nothing, just funny. Great memories. Just for a moment, we were able to take them out of their day-to-day -day existence and turn it into, there, that is the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen, these bobblehead dinosaurs roaming through the store, and to take them to a place that, that genuine laughter and genuine joy, if only for a few minutes. I think it's just fun. When the parents have to convince the kids, you know it's a wacky idea. <laughs> but good, glad to see everyone got on board to bring some smiles. <laughs> well, we are cruising into the weekend, Jeff. I'm going to wrap it up on Uplay at 11 over on 11 Alive, coming up in about 35 minutes. Great. Have a wonderful weekend, Aisha. Here's what's coming up on the Big 36. Taking on affirmative action in the country's top universities, the Ivy Leagues, the Trump administration accusing Yale of discrimination. Bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear on 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. The Trump administration taking on affirmative action in a new case against Yale. It is accusing the Ivy League school of violating civil rights law by discriminating against some applicants. Here's NBC's Gabe Gutierrez, who has more on the second time the administration has confronted Yale on the issue of race. This morning, Yale University is defending itself in a battle that could have major consequences for the future of affirmative action. The Justice Department is accusing the prestigious Ivy League school of violating federal civil rights law by discriminating against Asian Americans and white applicants. The Supreme Court has ruled several times that race can be used as one of many factors in college admissions, but the DOJ claims Yale is using it as a predominant factor. There is no such thing as a nice form of race discrimination, the Assistant Attorney General for Civil Rights said in a statement, adding unlawfully dividing Americans into racial and ethnic blocks fosters stereotypes, bitterness, and division. Yale fired back, saying it looks at the whole person when considering admission. The department's allegation is baseless, the university's president wrote. At this unique moment in our history, when so much attention properly is being paid to issues of race, Yale will not waver in its commitment to educating a student body whose diversity is a mark of its excellence. Rita Wang is a recent graduate. To me, like, I don't think that th these cases, like, being brought by the DOJ is to benefit Asian Americans. Instead, I think it's using Asian Americans as a way to dismantle like one of the few forms of economic mobility we have in America. And so that's why affirmative action is so important to me. In 2014, a lawsuit against Harvard alleged similar discrimination. Harvard won that case in district court, but the Trump administration is now backing an appeal. As for these new findings against Yale, critics say the government's four page argument is thin. I think it is highly unusual to suggest you got major findings in a case in a in discrimination where you're issuing a four-page letter that basically gives you no underlying facts the justice department's letter is not a lawsuit just yet yale has until august 27th to agree to suspend 
the use of rice in undergraduate admissions. If it doesn't, this could end up in court for many years. Schools across the country are searching for a way to get students back into the classroom safely, and there are many different ways and many different ideas that have been floating around. And one of them is to create something called cohorts. Chris Vanderveen is looking into what they are and how they can stop the spread of the virus. C-O-H-O-R-T. Look that up in the dictionary and you might find this, an ancient Roman military unit. We're not going to talk about that type of cohort. No, let's talk about another definition because chances are schools are going to be talking a lot more about cohorts thanks to COVID. Yet remember that? School leaders consider the best way to get kids back inside schools. They'll likely consider cohorting. A common term in sociology and education that's about to get its debut on a more national stage. Think of it like this. Many moons ago, I was a member of Denver's Thomas Jefferson High School class of 1992. Yeah, I know. I ain't no spring chicken. Technically, my 200 or so member class of 92 was a cohort, a group. Schools have all sorts of cohorts who tend not to intermingle with other cohorts, which in a building trying to limit the spread of an infectious disease could prove valuable. Look at it this way. Smith Elementary has a thousand students all in the same building, all who intermingle. Now let's say little Johnny gets sick. Johnny infects Timmy, who infects Billy and Sal, who infect Frankie, Julie, and Katie. This school will need to close, at least temporarily, and keep all thousand students, sick or not, out. Which is why schools will attempt to cohort. Let's say Johnny gets sick, but this time Johnny's in a 50-person group that doesn't interact with the other 950. So maybe Timmy, who's in Johnny's cohort, gets sick. But Billy and Sally and Frankie and Julie and Katie have no interaction with that cohort and thus never get sick. You'd still have to have Johnny's cohort stay home and wait for the risk to pass, but the other 950 still could go to school safely. The smaller the cohort, the smaller the number of students at risk when someone turns up sick. And now you know M-O-R-E about C-O-H-O-R-T. Nope, not that definition, the other one. Thanks, guys. You can go home now. In times of crises, faith-based organizations play an important role. They aid the poor. They give hope to the hopeless. And during a pandemic, their work continues, but in a different way. Tonight, a pastor, a rabbi, and an emir offer insight into how their lives, their professional lives, have changed. People are feeling isolated, people are dealing with depression, people are worried, people are afraid. And where do they often take that? To their faith leaders. I'm Dr. Tony Alvarado. Rabbi Peter Berg. My name is Fahid Ali Mawakel. You know, as Muslims, we, uh, our religion calls us to get real close, even in prayer, even in congregation. At the conclusion of a Shabbat service, for example, people gather and they hug each other and they eat and they drink. We lay hands on people when they're sick. We pray for people by laying our hands on them. When we dedicate babies, we hold the babies. Human touch is so important to every faith tradition and to human beings, and we, we've just lost that. I've learned how to, to do Zoom conversations with people in the hospital, um, you know, in a, in a COVID ward in the hospital. We used to feed the homeless. We used to go out and Sundays and feed the homeless downtown. We don't do that anymore. To not be able to gather at a funeral, not be able to, I mean, we gather before, during, and after the funeral. The emotional healing that takes place, the spiritual healing that takes place from the community I'm afraid it's lack. I think the, the faith leaders have this, you know, dual role right now. We're trying to take care of our own families and we're trying to take care of our flock, our, our congregations. The weight of it is heavy. The weight of it, the mental tone, the spiritual tone, the physical tone of it, it it's, it's heavy. Anyone who signs up to be a clergy of any faith or denomination has to love what they do, and I do. We believe that nothing happens unless God allows it. We're all experiencing it in the business world, in our homes, with our families, and in the faith community. We are all in this together. 
The U.S. borders with Canada and Mexico will remain closed to non-essential travel for another month until September 21st. The border closures were announced on March 18th. They were extended every month since. Essential workers like healthcare professionals, airline crews, and truck drivers are still permitted to cross. Officials say the measures could last several more months depending on the progression of the virus. Canadian authorities say they want to keep out U.S. tourists until there is clear evidence coronavirus outbreaks south of the border are under control. A big week of politics in both Georgia and around America. The biggest news, Joe Biden's selection of California Senator Kamala Harris as the running mate. Joining me right now is Chuck Todd, the moderator of Meet the Press. Chuck, we, we hear so many times that uh, vice presidential picks don't carry a lot of influence in the voting booth. Any chance this is different because Joe Biden would be 78 when he is inaugurated if he wins the election? You know, I, I still look at this. I, I think there could have been a lot more problems in a running mate selection. And I think he avoided problems where this could have been a problem for him. I, you know, he needed to make sure his running mate answered the ready on day one question. And she's answered that by running for president. That's done that. Now the question is, does she value add, right? There's no doubt, I think, on fundraising, she's a value add. You already saw the boost. I think on improving the enthusiasm among younger voters of color, that I, I think is a key metric. I think early indications are you are seeing some of that. It's mostly showing up in, in, in some fundraising where you see there is some extra interest now among younger voters where there wasn't that enthusiasm for Biden. There's a chance she's a huge asset. But at a minimum, I think she certainly doesn't hurt the ticket. Here in Georgia, a controversial candidate wins the Republican primary and is now clear sailing to become the next congresswoman here. The 14th Congressional District, Marjorie Taylor Greene, has expressed support for, you know, a lot of conspiracy theories. She is a firebrand, whether you like her politics or not. Uh, and, and she is mm -hmm. uh, what we have come to expect uh, here in 2020. It's just a, it's a different breed of political life form. It takes no prisoners. Jeff, this, this QAnon business is, is some, it's weird, it's crazy, it's a little crack potty, but it, it, may be, it may be becoming dangerous. I mean, you know, it was this QAnon nonsense that inspired some guy um, showing up at a pizza joint up here in, in Washington right. ready to open fire, right? So this is a, this is a, I think this is a political virus that the Republican Party is ignoring um, at their own peril. It's sort of more, if the LaRouches and John Birch Society had a baby, you'd have this. How's that? <laughs> Rosemary's baby. Where's Roman Polanski today? I, I, I like any reference to Lyndon LaRouche yeah. on the broadcast. That you, you, you win the contest today on that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Chuck Todd, thanks. We there appreciate you go. it. All <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> See you on Meet the Press Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on 11 yeah. Alive. We are watching two tropical storms in the Atlantic right now. This is Josephine, and then this is Kyle up off of the mid-Atlantic coast. Stay with us. We just got the latest advisory in on both of these systems. We'll let you know where they're headed. A day of rest for the Braves didn't mean a whole heck of a lot against the Marlins. What happened to the Braves tonight down south in Florida? That's coming up next. Of slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1105 News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where. Well, everybody is trying to avoid workout or uh, uh, burnout <laughs> workouts too. A lot of us are trying to avoid workouts. I've been successful at that for a number of years. Uh, workers though are feeling the effects of the pandemic, people working from home, and some are dealing with everything from anxiety to depression. Here's NBC's Dan Sheneman on how remote workers can overcome the burnout factor at home. Months of working from home is starting to wear on some employees. It takes a lot more effort than the natural going around talking to someone over coffee or having a meeting in a conference room. Amir Newman is a New York City-based practice lead for a data analytics company and feels the line between home and work has become blurred. You know, the, the work day is no longer a nine to five. While a large number of workers across the country are grateful for the flexibility of working at home, many feel beaten down. The majority of professionals are actually now working more hours than before. Lauren Appen, co-founder of the business networking app Fishbowl, says thousands of their users are burned out. 69% of professionals say that they feel burned out and actually 37% say that burnout is causing them to look for a new job. The MarTech group surveyed 1,000 people about the lasting effects of working from home. Mental health topped the list of concerns. We came up with these four buckets of people that uh, range from people who are thriving on one end in their response to people who feel um, trapped and are, and are having some serious mental health issues. And that trap group is struggling the most. They're, they're feeling, um, I'm isolated, I'm lonely. Everybody in all professions and in all industry uh, has to uh, understand that everybody's going through the same thing. Hey, All right, here's the story of a martyr driver who is working and making a living by day, but when he is not driving a bus, he has this unique gift and talent that is turning a lot of heads around Atlanta. He is a talented artist, and his work certainly is something that you will enjoy seeing. Michael Wall is his name, and his days begin behind the wheel of a bus. Here's 11 Alive's Brittany Klein-Peter. On the weekdays, I work at 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. 10 p.m. and 12 a.m., I'm usually painting, trying to figure out the questions that I have via Canvas. An Atlanta bus driver by day, artist by night. This is the life of Michael Wall. 
Sometimes I'm able to do it on my breaks. Like yesterday, I was able to start on the commission that I have. The MARTA employee is now giving patrons rides while showing off his artwork around the city. I told me in prior, you'll see this billboard sticking out there. The longtime artist recently won a contest through a company called Art Pop to have a piece of his work put on a vinyl billboard in Fulton County and several digital billboards throughout the city. And just like Michael himself, there is another story behind the artwork. This is actually a, a picture of my wife. I did it for our anniversary, which was on June 11th. We were married two years. Wall began working on the piece when the couple first got married. He surprised his wife for their anniversary by unveiling the portrait on the 100-foot vinyl sign. I think she was flabbergasted, but I, I, I can't totally speak for her, but I know she was excited, so I'm able to like not only show this gift to her, but also show it throughout the greater Atlanta area. The aspiring artist has a message for those pursuing their passion. If you feel something in your heart or in your soul or in your spirit or however you want to quantify that thing, categorize that, go for it. You're going to make yourself feel a lot better at the end knowing that you did what you wanted to do and not what somebody else made you do. Michael has been working for MARTA for the past three years. He hopes to be an artist full time, but until then, you can find him on Bus Route 15 on the weekdays and Bus Route 2 on the weekends. You know, it's nice to see these showers and storms diminishing somewhat, weakening as they move over to the east, but some of these still holding together with some pockets of heavy rain and lightning. In fact, this right here with the lightning uh, that's coming out of Walton County, it just went through Monroe, moving through parts of Oconee County, about to move into Athens with some heavy rain and, and a little bit of thunder and lightning with that, but it is continuing to show signs of weakening as it moves on over to the east. This extends down south of I-20 here. Again, here's that heaviest part. Uh, right there at the Walton and Oconee County line. And then here's the Clark County line right up here, getting closer to Athens. So in Watkinsville, Athens, if you look toward the west, you're most likely seeing some of this lightning from the distance, probably hearing some of that thunder and that rain's about to move your way too. And then south of I-20, we see the heaviest activity here around uh, Putnam County, moving down toward Baldwin County at Milledgeville, uh, moderate rain in Jasper County at Monticello, also up to the north toward Covington too. And that back edge is gonna keep moving out. Oconee, uh, Lake Oconee, you'll probably see some of this rain coming in, uh, but it's not gonna be as heavy as it was earlier when it was on the south side. Here in Atlanta, we have clouds around, a couple of spotty showers in Cobb County, some lighter showers there, Paulding County getting a moderate shower. Uh, also over North Georgia, we're seeing some areas still with moderate rain near Calhoun, also in Gilmer County. These in White County, we're producing a little bit of lightning that's starting to let up right now, but still some moderate rain there moving to the east. So just note for the rest of the nighttime hours while you're sleeping, don't be surprised if you have some uh, rain on your roof while you're sleeping, but it won't be anything particularly strong. Now tomorrow we have a 60% chance for showers and storms to redevelop highs below 90 at 87 and then on Sunday a high of 90, but the rain chances are out of here. Here's Josephine, but then we also have a new tropical storm. This is Kyle. The good news about this storm is it's off the coast and it's going to stay off the coast and continue to move up toward the north and to the east. This is the latest 45 mile an hour winds moving east northeast. It'll most likely stay a tropical storm before it loses its tropical characteristics. Don't think it'll become a hurricane. We don't think Josephine will become a hurricane either. It's just struggling to maintain tropical storm strength. It just went up to 45 mile an hour winds. It will be dying out once we go through the uh, second half of the weekend and it curves away from land. So both of those systems, neither of them will have any threat on the United States. 60% chance for showers here on Saturday. The rain chance is out of here for Sunday. You got to like that with a high of 90 and then a really low chance Monday at 20 percent then a 30 to 40 percent chance for showers Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Temperatures holding in the 80s for much of next week too. The Braves back in action in South Florida in Miami to wrap up their lengthy road trip. They got a much needed day off on Thursday before facing the first place Marlins for Miami's first home game of this unusual season. Ronald Acuna Jr. out of the lineup for the weekend with wrist inflammation. He will be reevaluated on Monday. The starting rotation issues continue to linger large for the Braves. Kyle Wright pulled in the fourth after walks haunted him again. Six free passes in this game. Marlins with the all around effort to beat the Braves. 8-2, they stay atop the National League East standings.
they're footloose and fancy free right now, yeah. man. I mean, it's just like they're hitting the ball and they're, you know, they're getting taking the next base or getting put out. You can't walk them. I mean, that's the thing. You can't walk these guys because, you know, they go first to third. They score from first on a double. They steal. They, they do all the little things uh, really good. And, you know, and that being said, we probably played by one of our poorest games in the last two years. The Atlanta Sports Awards are set for Saturday, 7 p.m. on 11 Alive. We have our last sneak preview, the Outstanding Team 1-1 High School Athlete. Here goes. Let's see the winner. Outstanding Team 1-1 High School Athlete. Raven Johnson is used to winning. Westlake's rising senior is a three-time state champion going for a four-peat this winter. It's not many girls that can say they have a four-peat in Georgia, so that's one of the things I want to do. This year's Team 1-1 Outstanding Athlete also has goals bigger than a state title. This year we got invited to Nationals, so we didn't get to go because of coronavirus. So my goal was to get invited to Nationals again and win that for my coach. Leave with a good mark for her. Johnson is a South Carolina commit looking to continue to win at the next level. The culture, definitely the culture, the fan base. Um, definitely Don Staley, her being a point guard, me being a point guard, her being a point guard coach, I feel like she can take my game to the next level, um, let it grow, and definitely the girls that's there, we have a shot of winning the national championship, so I look at that. DeKalb County Schools will postpone all fall sports competitions until the end of September. At that point, they will reevaluate. The decision comes one day after Fulton County announced it is delaying fall sports until September 14th. Wednesday, the Big South Conference announced no football in the fall with the intent of playing in the spring. The conference is letting each university decide if it wants to play up to four non-conference games this fall. Kennesaw State is saying no to that. Head coach... Uh, Brad Bohannon is now uh, tweeting a statement saying, in part, that we will spend the semester preparing to put a championship product on the field in the spring. And that is sports. We'll be right back. Verify team, is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. 
We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects. 60% chance for showers with a high of 87 degrees and then no rain chances on Sunday, but still warm at 91 low rain chances Monday, then back to 30 to 40% chances for showers for next week with high temperatures in the mid and some upper 80s. Today at noon on 11 alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a 